call of PI Industries Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Nishit Solanki from CDR India. Thank you and over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on PI Industries Q1 FI22 earnings conference call. Today, we are joined by senior members of the management team, including Mr. Mayank Singhal, Executive Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Dr. Raman Ramchandran, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Rajni Sarna, Joint Managing Director, Dr. KVS Ramrao, Executive Director, and Mr. Manik Kantan Vishwanathan, Chief Financial Officer. We will begin the call with key perspectives from Mr. Singhal. Thereafter, we will have Mr. Manikantan sharing his views on the financial performance of the company. After that, the forum will be open for question and answer session. Before I begin, I would like to underline that certain statements made on the conference call today may be forward-looking in nature. A disclaimer to this effect has been included in the investor presentation shared with you earlier and also available on the Stock Exchange website. I would now like to request Mr. Singhal to share his perspectives with you. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Nishit. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone. Again, once again, I'm very pleased to address you all and hope everyone and your families are keeping well and healthy in these challenging times. Now, let me start with PI. Again, I think PI yet again has delivered a strong improvement in performance in the first quarter for the year 2022. Despite the significant COVID related challenges that we've always been witnessing during this quarter, the revenue increased by 13% to be the up by 8%. And this fact depicted a growth of 29% over last year. Now, coming to our CFM business, it's continued robust growth momentum with a 31% year in year growth. We are looking at six new molecules to be commercialized in the coming year, where, in addition to the capacities commissioned in the previous year, we'll be commissioning a new facility in the present quarter. The momentum of inquiries in order book buildup has been encouraging, indicating a robust growth in the coming years from new commercializations. During the quarter, and again, please to share that we have indicated new relationships with new customers in active electronics and other fine chemical, specialty chemical domains. Our existing portfolio has grown sizable and continues to ramp up further in line with the requirement of the innovative partners, higher super creativity by us and continuous capex. The domestic business, on the other hand, as growth was subdued due to the combined high breaks over the previous year, which had grown in the previous year by 50% year on year, delayed on to the monsoon in the key cropping regions, deadly spread of the corona, uh, COVID-19 during the quarter, particularly in the rural areas, which impacted the sentiment performance distributor channels. However, the COVID situation has since improved, and with the monsoon forecast coming to normal, expected by the coming months, The remaining period, we see an improvement in the demand in the current quarters coming ahead. We have three new products lined up in Q3 with, with rice, cotton, and horticulture portfolio. We have the strongest portfolio of horticulture in the country and are confident we're having a strong growth. Q2 will see a product transitioning to new packaging that will add efficiency enhanced branding in the customer mindset. In a simulation of the salvo domestic operations into Chibago, with a comprehensively enhanced our hold in within India in the horticultural brand. The upcoming season, we'll see PI lenders experience base of innovation agility onto the field through the application services often where we do by design, we set up to address specific farming challenges. And such initiatives will incorporate novel technologies and methods of communication and more deeply to deliver efficiency, a process and cost to our solution. It remains our stated objective to diversify our technology basket. The new research facility, which we are developing, will further augment our efforts in this direction. I would like to share that we have made marked progress under our product research initiative, as well as two promising leads have emerged. One being a novel fungicide, other being a novel broad spectrum insecticide. They continue to allow the global innovators to tap the an opportunity in these initiatives, making PI one of the first in this arena in the, in the Indian landscape. 
Coming to other strategic initiatives, I'm very pleased to share that last week, a board approved the acquisition of the API and intermediate business of Intercept Laboratories, in line with a long-term objective for diversifying into agencies and building the next level of uh, next growth engines for the exploitation. This acquisition will help us in building a differentiated platform in the pharma value chain, but combining a technological product pipeline and leveraging a competency across the complex chemistry and operation and commercial action, expanding the global research and large innovative partnerships for delivering solutions. As you see, the specialty chemical has emerged as a high growth opportunity for Indian domestic companies. With this benefit of robust domestic consumption, large chemistry capabilities in favorable geopolitical scenarios, we are seeing growth momentum in the Indian industry, which has significant potential to improve the market share in the global opportunity. PI strategy and approach has matched to science aspirations and the development of both research and the power of the manufacturing profile, which is concurrent to the scaling up of a partnership with global innovators. This is inherent predictability for upside in our approach, and we are in there for the long term. Our aspiration to develop a diversified business mix to target much larger global opportunities in the fine and specialty chemical space with a differentiating technological approach so that we can sustain the growth momentum for long periods of time. Proposed acquisition is the first significant step in this direction. I have covered the key perspective that I wanted to bring to you, and now I would like to invite a new CFO, Mr. Manikandam Rajanathan, to lead the conversation with views of the delivery improvements in the financial. He brings to PI a long term experience of fields of finance, having worked with groups like Reliance, Scottish, and other large industrial groups. And his journey of PI was sent in our bandwidth for efficiency management of growth journey of PI. Thank you, and over to you, Mani. Thank you, Mani. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining the call today. I am personally delighted to join the leadership team. Just to give my background, I am a chartered accountant with 30 plus years of experience across large conglomerates. Prior to this, I was associated with Rosari Biotech as their group CF. With my exposure and experience, I am confident that I will be able to contribute and be part of the growth journey, PI growth journey. I would like to share financial highlights for the first quarter of the fiscal year 2021. All comparisons are on a year on year basis and consolidated. In Q1 FI22, we registered 13% revenue growth at Rs. 1,194 crore, driven by over 30% expansion in the income export at Rs. 807 crore, supported by strong volume growth in key products. Domestic operations reported some moderation in performance due to higher base of the last year and delayed onset of months. Domestic revenue stood at Rs. 387 crores in Q1 of FI22. On the profitability front, gross margin increased by 1.7%, supported by favorable product next in the domestic operation. EBITDA enhanced by 8% to Rs. 252 crores, translating to EBITDA margin of 21%. Moderation in margin was as a result of 26% increase in overhead cost relating to one-time expenses pertaining to COVID management as well as consulting fee and other costs pertaining to several strategic initiatives and projects. Profit of the tax improved by 29% year-on-year to Rs. 187 crore led by reduced effective rate during this quarter. Strong performance during the quarter Further strengthened the balance sheet of, the, of our company. We generated operating cash flow of at least 250 crores in Q1 FI22. Further, we tactically increased our inventory position to cover ourselves in case of any supply disruption on due to COVID. Overall surplus cash net of debt stood at 2,193 crores. We Look to fund the acquisition of the API and intermediate business of Intercept Laboratories Limited of 1,530 crores from the proceeds of complete equity and internal accruals. Let me also share some details about our capital expenditure. Our capex out is 41 FI22, so that's 71 crores, and we remain committed of spending close to 350 crores in the current fiscal year to support our growth momentum. 
we remain positive on the robust outlook across our business verticals of domestic as well as exports backed by solid visibility to support the momentum and now pharma which we look to integrate this year subject to fulfillment of customary closing conditions and regulatory we will also wish to maintain our original guidance of above 15% of revenue growth for fy22 this concludes my opening remarks now may i request the moderator to open the forum for q and a thank you thank you very much sir ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press the then one on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star then two participants are requested to use handsets while ask, asking a question also we would like to request participants in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference call please limit your questions to two per participant for any further questions you may come back for a follow up we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles the first question is from the line of nitin gosar from investco mutual fund please go ahead i uh, thanks for the opportunity uh so couple of question uh, one wanted to understand uh, the acquisition that we have done uh the site belong to the northern part of india while if one were to see you know most uh, pharma api intermediate companies are situated in andhra pradesh and that belt is around telangana uh what gives you a, a, a strength or a scope of excitement to acquire some assets at the northern part of india Sorry, your voice is not coming clear. Neither you could get your question because it's very muffled. Oh, sorry. I, I'll just repeat, sir. Um, yes. So, considering the current acquisition that we have done, which is closer to the Andhra Pradesh, uh, northern part of India, well, if I were to see uh, the API and intermediate industry per se uh, is largely situated in uh, southern part of India. What kind of distinct advantage we are uh, seeking while acquiring this asset? which is uh, situated in northern part of india yeah thank thank for this question um, so you know for us primarily the uh, you know criteria for identifying a suitable target was based on of you know the quality of assets that this company has the kind of regulatory approval that this company has the product portfolio the pipeline of production r and d and you know these kind of uh, criteria not necessarily that uh, you know locationally where this uh, uh, you know company is so we have found this uh, you know after after uh, spending uh, reasonably good time you know in evaluation of number of options that uh, we were evaluating we found uh, that these these criteria or these requirements that we had uh, were getting met by this particular option and we were also kind of able to clearly assess that what kind of additional value that we can also create what kind of synergies and you know additional uh, values that we can create by combining our strengths and portfolios and all and and we found all that uh, getting met in this particular option and that has been the clear basis for our decision right sir uh, uh second question is pertaining to the uh, uh, again uh, in swift acquisition how does it fit then the uh, long term plan of us getting into uh, pharma cramps kind of business uh, i believe in swift is largely still doing generic kind of business yes so uh, in the current model is uh, you know generic product although they are in a leadership position in many of these uh, products that they are dealing but apart from that they also have uh, is, you know relatively smaller cramp fee uh, cramp business fee and our idea is to you know gradually grow that business um look at opportunities that we have with pi in our pipeline and also exploit more opportunities that that are in pipeline of um, isll 
in terms of PDMO. So yes, uh, the longer term uh, objective will be to further grow and make that a sizable uh, component of the overall business. And strategically, so uh, uh, PI will use its uh, R&D skill and uh, InShift will provide the manufacturing uh, platform. Is that the way to understand? Can you repeat? Your voice is not very clear for us. My bad, sir. Uh, so, uh, if I were to understand, PI will provide the R&D related skill set and InSwift will provide the manufacturing platform. Is there a bit, uh, is this the uh, best way to understand the uh, the acquisition? Uh, well, InSwift also, ISLL also has their own R&D. There are more than 150 people, chemists. They have a very good setup, R&D setup. Um, our point is that with our technological capabilities and our strength in R&D, we will further strengthen this overall uh, R&D in pharma, you know, and expedite the pipeline that uh, both the companies have. And in addition, uh, they have the a good set of uh, assets, you know, more than 26, 27 uh, manufacturing blocks and other um, capabilities. But there also we will, uh, you know, through and we can certainly leverage our operational excellence capabilities in, chem I mean, chemical, um, large chemical plants and scale-up. And by combining these capabilities, we'll be able to create much bigger value. That's the whole idea. So if I was to add, if you were to look at the bucket, PI stands obviously in the capability of global business, develop concepts in the areas of technology chemistry and process capabilities, followed with the growth compliance and regulatory framework. Added with the requirements of pharma, which obviously, which come well with the IFL, high, highly credited facility coming with all the regulatory approvals, with no challenges on that front, with quality infrastructure. Having demonstrated history and credibility, which already exists, obviously the challenges come with the gender portfolio, with certain pieces in CDMO. Clearly the PIs competent leadership back with the pharma knowledge ability that you already accumulated with leadership in our organization and our technical capabilities. We plan to combine these to lever to create a different level playing platform to differentiate ourselves in the pharma space in the next three to four years. And that's really where things are moving in that direction. Yeah. Excuse me, this is the and this is just a step to accelerate the process for us to make a larger impact in the pharma place. Uh, Mr. Gosar, may we request you to come back in the queue for a follow-up, please? Thank you. We would request participants to please limit your questions to two per participant. For any further questions, you may come back for a follow-up. The next question is from the line of Utsav Mehta from Edelweiss Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Good afternoon. Am I audible? Sure. Yes. yes. Uh, hi. Good afternoon, sir. So, two very quick questions. One is that uh, in Swift, uh, if you look at their their current business, it's a business that's operating at at you know extremely high working capital, it's almost 300 plus days, uh, very low asset terms as well. Uh, also, there is also an element, if I'm not mistaken, where I think promoter related entities own almost 290, 300 crores of receivables to in Swift. Uh, so, could you just provide some sense on whether this working capital can come down back to you know, some levels at which PI currently operates, and does the acquisition value also include this 300 crores to be returned back to interest? Yes, so, um, thanks for the question. Uh, yes, certainly, currently, uh, interest is operating at a much higher, uh, you know, working capital level. Um, as we all know, they were passing through financial stress, and they had their own reasons of uh, you know, operating at these levels. And obviously, um, once PI acquires, uh, we will we'll certainly be managing the business as per the you know, normal uh, working capital norms, which is certainly you know, anywhere between 25% plus or around that, 25 to 30% around that. And therefore, uh, we will certainly, you know, in a, in a quick time, we'll be able to kind of bring down this working capital levels of this company to uh, near optimal. Okay. Uh, in terms of um, our 
consideration yes i mean there is a normal working capital which is part of this consideration that we have indicated uh, as as usual um, you know the acquisition side consists of the normal working capital which is certainly not this old um doubtful debt for receivables or related party items but yes there is a normal capital working capital level which is part of the consideration okay so this this money basically will be sort of considered written off uh when taking over the business is that that's probably correct right it is just yeah this yes. won't be transferred over okay and my second question is uh you know as you go about cleaning up some of this business making it lower working capital more profitable do you believe that uh this insist top line of 850 crores will need to be reduced and you know some of the more uh, unprofitable business sort of need to be stopped before you can start growing the business again uh well whatever assessment that we have made obviously we'll be making a more detailed assessment but this is our assessment so far we see a lot of uh, you know unexploited opportunities to even grow their existing products um you know not maybe not all products but to many of their products there are unexploited uh, you know growth opportunities which, which we will certainly kind of um, try and achieve by commercial excellence on one side and on the other side yes as as we have also try to articulate in our release that we will certainly strengthen this product portfolio by combining our own uh, product pipeline that we have been able to build and identify over last uh, couple of years to our efforts in uh, pharma space so by combining these two yes i mean ultimately the business has to run as per the you know um, financial parameters and other strategic parameters we asset terms or uh, working capital terms or, or, or improved margins and all and these are going to be obviously the clear uh, guidelines and threshold for us to kind of grow this business from here thank you the next question is from the line of abhijit akela from iifl securities please come here yeah uh, good afternoon thank you so much uh, for taking the question um so just a question on the csm revenues this quarter uh, they seem to have uh, fallen on a sequential basis uh, to about 800 crores compared to 1000 crores last year last quarter in 4q um so you know any color you could uh, shed on what's driving that and should we expect this to come back to the fourth quarter run rate starting next quarter well you know csm although uh, not as seasonal as we see in domestic but it still you know it is it is uh, driven by the season global season so it is not that uh, you know revenues are uh, you know uh, distributed equally across all the four quarters um, there is a you know um, slight increase in the second half and particularly by the end of the year given the you know inventory plans or business plans of the customer company so yes i mean if you see year on year growth uh, there is a decent growth more than 30% and then we expect to end up um, you know on year on year basis we expect to still uh, um expect to still achieve the growth in subsequent quarters not necessarily on a sequential basis okay got it sir and uh, the other thing was just on the guidance that we have provided uh, for fiscal 22 the 15% plus growth guidance um does that uh, is that excluding the acquisition or uh, you know how should we think about that yeah that excludes acquisition i mean this guideline was primarily for our organic growth okay fine thank you i'll come back in the queue thank you the next question is from the line of ritesh gupta from kotak securities please go ahead hi sir thanks for taking my questions and congrats on a great set of a great acquisition actually uh, just wanted to understand a bit in terms of uh, how you uh, see the opportunity in terms of uh, you know uh, your own pipeline i mean if you could just you have talked about your own pipeline but let's say what kind of areas that you are focusing on is it more on the intermediate side is it more on the 
EPA, on the APIs which are turning generic in the near term, uh, or let's say the focus is actually to go and cross sell it more uh, as, as we go about. I think that's the question number one. And the second question is on the just wanted to check on the uh, on the CFO resignation. I mean, there have been a couple of them over. I mean, not a couple of them actually, but yeah, I mean, we have seen multiple resignations over the last six, seven years. So uh, could you just uh, you know give us a sense on what's uh, what's the thinking there and why there is there have been so many changes? Yeah, so I think on the CFO front, obviously the incumbent who was there had a certain world to relocate to. That he had certain locational challenges, and also the with an expansion of work. So he decided to he, he was as group CFO, and he decided to step down. And money, in any case, was a part of the plan to join in, which has now been inducted, and so we are in that process. So this is something that. Thank you. Sure. Uh, and coming to your first question, uh, uh, Ritesh, um, I mean, currently we will not be in a position to give very specific answers which are the kind of products that are in pipeline and what kind of growth that we would expect from them. But yes, um, you know, alongside the closing of this uh, transaction, we shall certainly, you know, come back with a very um, detailed uh, commentary that what are uh, the areas that we are focusing, which are the molecules or products, both on intermediate side as well as on API side, um, from, from uh, the combined entity that we will target in the next uh, two to three years for scale up and uh, not to accelerate the revenue. So if I were to answer that, we look at two prompt strategy. What is that new comes in and obviously as it has a gestation period and already, as you know, that some of the products that they already have strengths in, their leveraging capability. How do we further strengthen them and bring in our technological capabilities to really create leadership position from a global level for the moment? And that's the two prompt strategy that you're working the short and the long. Yeah? Sure. And um, I don't know if you have uh, discussed this earlier uh, in the first few minutes of the call, but on the uh, you talked about two discovery stage molecules. So uh, I mean, what's the plan there? How close it is to commercialization? Could it be many many years ahead? Uh, and you have also talked about you know, the innovator partnership that you're looking at. So if you could just give us some sense there as well. Yeah, so I think this is a glitch in the price of the company. You know, as years of years, we've been talking about investment in R&D, with huge amount of investment in R&D. I think today the company has been able to come up with two innovative molecules which can be globalized. The first Indian company to bring innovative products to the world market. Obviously, this is right now at an early stage of development. And uh, we, again, here, are philosophy given that of a partnership approach. are going to be looking at the co-development across the globe with global innovators as partners who could support in the development activity across the world. And that's where we are. So it's a good moment. moment of pride again, a good show of EI's ability in this research capability at the global level in business back Sure, sir. Thank you so much for taking your questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from NK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on the acquisition. So the first question is again on the acquisition front. So in terms of the uh, business, uh, how are we looking at the integration benefits over the next maybe two to three years? And uh, whether the same team will remain there and uh, spearhead the business? And are there any uh, performance related uh, payments uh, on the acquisition? Thank you. Yeah. What do you mean by the clarity? Sorry, what do you mean by the same team remain there? Uh, I mean, the, do we uh, integrate the current team, or there will be uh, some team uh, which will be let go off because of the integration? No, no, uh, I guess uh, that's a separate vertical. As you see, pharma, the skills are there. So that current team continues to remain. Obviously, we will augment the team with more resources to develop the future strategies. As you know, the management, which is owner driven, is stepping out. So we'll be bringing, we already are in the process. We have already got some. We'll be working to build a robust team to actually drive their business for the future. Goals. So we very much will integrate on the members of the team which are there as a part of our play. And, and this business is getting acquired along uh, with the existing team, you know. So they have some close to 15, 1600 uh, people on a permanent basis, and they'll be part of this uh, acquisition. So they obviously they remain the part of this 
um, new entity and further uh, strengthening will be done on uh, different leadership levels to kind of drive the growth of this uh, new new entity right and any uh, sizable integration benefits that we are looking at well as i said to the earlier um, participant that we are in the process of uh, you know kind of putting together uh, there are uh, obviously initial assessments done but uh, as part of this next couple of months exercise we will be certainly kind of clearly defining these things and uh, alongside closing we shall come out with more details on and i must also explain that please appreciate that there is a different business it is not as the lot of synergy with the existing and some are in a different approach in management so the more and the further we are investing to grow this business and develop so the benefits would be more from learning capabilities which for uh, the larger general approaches which we have here and investing in that to build that business up that's really where it lies so don't see much of integrated benefits as there are different verticals which will run in a different way because the business requirements are different about to their land and their pharma and more so from a regulatory perspective all right got it uh, so the second question is in terms of uh, the qip money so we have invested about 1500 crores uh, in this acquisition and we are still left with about 500 uh, crores of uh, money so are we looking at another inorganic opportunity in the future thank you yes so we will continue to kind of uh, keep looking and evaluating um, more opportunity on technology side and on other uh, you know areas that we have identified for ourselves you know which are uh, in line with our longer term long term strategy so yes we will keep evaluating looking at opportunities um, besides this we also have uh, you know our organic growth plan so yes i mean we will be looking at overall cash city both uh, qrc and our internal accruals um for for the for for the uh, you know subsequent uh, initiative that will be taken yes yeah, so the actual initiative will be based on our strategic direction and on anything which is fitting our competence capability to look at and in alignment to our objectives we will look and i think timing is critical based on where we are and what we are doing so very clearly growth is a clear defined objective and goal smart is the goal set for us so keeping those two in mind this will always be a part of our plan uh thanks for the clarification and best of luck sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of bharat shah from ask investment managers please go ahead yeah the first question on the acquisition philosophically i would say acquisition must meet with three criteria uh, one that it must create value of its own and its economics uh, must make sense uh, second uh, that the company to be acquired uh, we should be able to add value so that it's more than what we have acquired and third uh, that what has been acquired should be able to add a value to what we are doing in our existing business so if we if you agree with uh, this uh, framework uh, i would like to have a feedback as to how you view uh, this acquisition on these three parameters so by the way if i want to take it thank you that's a very good question and i think that's the right way of looking at things but when i look at the last question you see there are certain characteristics which are there in pharma which come from different platforms which come into play Uh, from a competency building capability in terms of technology that is chemistry or non chemistry based and dramatic or others is something which we believe we will be acquiring and i think there is a crossover lever which would play there uh, third it is also opening a larger channel is the other part of the business in the complementary sense to what we already know well is chemistry and process fourth is a highly regulated and com- and uh, compliance regulated environment which pi is very versed with and works in that same work so hence for us to move up the value chain and handle that in the pharma is something we believe can be done well but clearly the growth path which we have been able to see to be drawn is drawn from my internal strategy which should be on the works before even looking at the acquisition as we already have planned so there is a synergy which comes 
which is again complementing the back with our own capabilities in R&D. So looking at these three, four pillars which integrate well, this, this made the right pitch sense to make a step and then to say how we can find other things to make them jump. So that's really where we are right now. Uh, which means uh, we believe that what we are acquiring is making eminent economic and uh, strategic sense. It will add value to what we are doing and we'll be able to enhance value and therefore it will be like a triple one uh, combined together. Uh, yes. So, as like you said, we're not looking at this as a one plus one. We're looking at a bigger number to that. Uh, is equal to two? No, that's not the answer. And it's acquisition of business is just not only purely for financial terms and conditions, but also for acquiring competence and capabilities and technologies which become a multiplier, but they may have a longer gestation. As you can see that today we've been able to evolve in the agrochemical business from mere generic producer to marketer to innovative product selling to custom manufacturing today to become an innovator company to generate new molecules at the global level. So, that's a, and again, we would leave that to the part of this company by acquiring, building, and creating IP. That's really how we've gone about. And the same kind of philosophy we are applying here, but in a differentiated model in the pharma space, where the canvas is big and the pharma world is more matured and open to such kind of platforms to play. That's really where we are targeting. And, have, and expect that to definitely give us more than one plus one to two. Thank you, thank you, man. Uh, second question is on the uh, human talent pool. Uh, utilization, uh, I think we are working on more advanced chemistry than before. Uh, we are working with more sophisticated customers than before. And now we are adding more verticalization by adding pharma. And even in terms of the size, uh, organization has come some way from where it was. And all these will mean uh, that uh, human capital, which is at the core of uh, what we do, because we are not in a business of commodity chemicals, we are in the business of uh, value creating uh, activity. Uh, our ability to a, synergize our manpower plants, attract the right kind of talent across the different areas, retain them, and uh, create a sustained excellence uh, in organization. What are the quotes on that? Sure, sir. I'll answer one part and then maybe allow someone to step in. As a part of the strategy, we've already looked at. If I was to answer specifically in the, sh in the right now, we've already looked at accumulating talent in the pharma space. We already have the R&D and the HR leadership in place to do that. We are in the process of looking at leads. Internally, we have Dr. KVS, DV, Katar, other people who come for very strong and well versed in the pharma play. Could be directionally giving, and under them, we get the leaders to drive and put that business. On the other hand, in the CSM, we've been able to build those kind of verticals that are there. In the ad business, we've got the two leadership in place. And now we are staring to the next step where we are working in a program where we are looking at creating the next operating model for multi-engine organization growth by putting a differentiated structure and putting them with the light skill sets and then aligning them to begin to create a larger purpose of the organization to go to the next phase of growth. And you know these are parts of steps of changes as you grow from one to the other. You need to plan, and that's probably why you will see that there has been a huge investment in the HR front, which is reflected well in Q1, where you will see the human capital costs go up because we've acquired talent, we're grooming them to go to the next phase, investing in that, and then building the next team to go to these multi-engine large frameworks to work. Yeah? So clearly this is a top priority in the organization, driven at an objective level, and we're direction in that manner. And maybe, Raman, you can bring it to give a few more bullets of highlights what you're trying to do in that. Raman, you are there? Hello. Yeah, yeah, you can be here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Mike, uh, thanks for that, uh, you know, for giving me the opportunity. So clearly this is an area which has been very high focus in the last 12 to 18 months, uh, knowing clearly that we are going into the adjacency of pharma, we are going to have technology as the core driver of both the pharma and the custom synthesis business. So there are two approaches. One is develop, identifying and developing internal talent. And, and here we uh, have external 
uh, facilitators who are helping us to for use formal, well-tested tools to identify potential talents and also invest in them to you know really grow future leadership uh, at multiple levels within the company. And of course, then there is also a very clear strategy which is acquiring talent from outside in order to fill the gaps of new kind of skills and new competencies that the organization will lead and uh, will need as we move into this growth journey, uh, which is uh, you know technology based and then growing into adjacencies. Yeah. So so that is in in summary the approach. Uh, just to reiterate that tremendous amount of leadership time is spent on this, uh, and we are also seeking the efforts of the best of the uh, outside, uh, you know, organ outside the organization to help us in this process. The second part that Mayank alluded to, which is a larger transformation that is happening, uh, which looks into how the organization should be designed in future in order to not only grow the existing business, uh, what we call as the deliver the current agenda and you know develop the future agenda. So those would be the two broad areas of addressing this uh, uh, very important talent need to drive the business at these very high growth rates. Where do we stand in that journey as we look at within so in that journey, uh, so 18 months ago, we started the whole process of, uh, you know, objective assessment of internal talent. So we've kind of, you know, assessed more than 300 internal talents, identified, you know, uh, talents that can potentially have leadership ability and potentially have learnability where they can, you know, go and learn higher skills, etc. And we are now investing into developing them. The... Uh, Acquire talent strategy is something that's an ongoing process, uh, and and you will probably see the results of that over the next uh, maybe three to six months time. Excuse me, this is the operator, Mr. Shah. May be requested to come back in the queue for a follow up, please. Thank you. The next question is from the Ashish Nai from Accenture Fund. Hello, sir. Um, just wanted uh, some bit of more clarity on the two novel molecules uh, that we have highlighted in the presentation. Um, A, in terms of uh, the timelines, as we mentioned that we are in the development phase, so at what uh, level are we looking to partner with uh, potential innovators? And second, in terms of uh, when you say that uh, this is a high, uh, uh, the potential market opportunity is big, uh, which are the uh, markets and uh, end segments that we are looking at, and if possible, some level of understanding on the potential size of these molecules. Uh, also, just one more question. In general, what is the strategy on novel molecules? Uh, are we going to keep developing more such molecules? And if yes, uh, would it be largely related to agrochem? Clearly, I think to answer your last question first, yes, that's the core competency we built with the app suite, which gives us a unique platform to develop our own products and molecules. Each product comes with its own global landscape in place. Yes, the partnership approach is what is going to be applied to this year from a development purpose. So your question towards the time scale, you could see some of these phase into four to five years before they really hit the market. Yes, the, the opportunity size in this are more of a part of the development activity evaluation process. Which size, what segments? These are pretty fairly well worked segments. As this was the first time we entered, so we've taken a cautious call to where we want to play. The segments are pretty large in large geographies of the world. Right now, we are under various evaluation stages, and that's what we call the development phase. And I think we will come to a more mature understanding of this over time of a few seasons across the globe when we get some results. And that's where we and we are looking to partner starting at this stage to be commercializing stage is where we start talking to partners for the purpose of partnership. Yeah. So should, would it be fair to say that we will probably look at a partnership maybe if, if the commercialization is four years down the line, maybe after a year or so? Sure, yeah, somewhere around that. Understood. Great. That that helps a lot. Thank you. You know what you have to start, you know, some of these things, you have to start dialogues, various evaluation processes, things work around. You know, unfortunately, but the reality and that is the fun, it's a ten year journey. We have only six years down it. And with another four to it. And we are happy that at least six years down the line we have babies which can actually become adults, hopefully. Right? 
First, we're producing the babies as I put in simple terms. And now, obviously, we are not likely to decide what is the best tool set after we put them together. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suman Kumar from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, so can you talk about uh, the electronic chemical and other especially chemical uh, opportunity? You have uh, mentioned in the PPT, you have initiated relationship with a new customer. So can you talk uh, more about the segment? Clearly, as we focus in the fine chemical area, we have talked to a couple of customers, and I'm happy to say that this quarter we have, we, we are commercialized small batch production of these chemicals in the end area of application. So that's where we are, and this again is one step towards looking at another part of the canvas for growing our competencies. While the skill sets are mind differentiated between complementary between pharma and act, a combined skills of those create a different play in that space from learning the skill sets. And we've also entered that. So over the next two to three to four years we'll anticipate to learn them well. Then as we look at scaling up it is the next journey. Can you uh, can you talk about the domestic business for the outlook for the coming quarters? How the how the business is setting up? Raman, would you like yeah. to take that up, please? Yeah, definitely. So, so let me let me give you a very quick um, Q1 situation. So, the the market in itself, uh, uh, due to some delayed rain, there was some parts of the country where there was some delayed planting. Uh, in comparison to last year's same quarter, when the distribution channel, out of fear of supply chain shortages due to COVID lockdown, et cetera, had a very high propensity to pre-purchase, this year we also found that that tendency to pre-purchase wasn't there. So we believe in the first quarter the market probably was slightly flattish to you know maybe a high single uh, in a low single digit growth. Uh, so our own performance, the two pieces of domestic business that we have, one which is the PI distribution business, and then the other one which is the Jivagro, which you also saw in the investor presentation, the new company that focuses on the horticulture. So the PI uh, last year had a very, very high growth base. You know, So the first quarter, the growth was almost about uh, 34, 35 percent, if I remember. So on that basis, you know, the, the, the growth this year we had expected, um, you know, there would be pressures, and as expected, it is, you know, less than uh, it, it kind of declined. Uh, but the Jiva Group piece of the business actually did grow. Uh, it grew at a healthy five, six percent. So, so overall, I think our strategy is working. Uh, in the second quarter, we uh, we expect uh, the business to kind of come back because the monsoon has kind of widely spread now. Uh, the demand is starting to pick up, although the western part and cotton region still are suffering. And if if it does not rain in the next week or ten days, we believe there will be some uh, some spray slots that is lost, uh, which will depress the market. But we are still very optimistic. Um, uh, and we, uh, we in the second quarter, we will also be launching three new products. Uh, that also gives us, uh, you know, g you know, b some uh, options or opportunities for growth. So, cautiously optimistic about the second quarter is what I would say. Um, excuse me, this is the operator, Mr. Kumar. May we request you to come back for a follow-up, please? Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first question, uh, you know, on the CAPEX side. Uh, so we, our order book still stands at a healthy $1.5 billion plus. Uh, when the CAPEX number that we are starting for is $3.5 billion or IMR. Uh, so I'm going back to our earlier comments, probably a couple of quarters back, wherein we did mention the thrust and focus on the tech-led innovative, uh, uh, you know, initiatives. Uh, which can drive a higher effect on there. Uh, so, is it because of that the capex is slightly lower? And you know your thoughts there. I think when you look at the capex, that's not linear, as I would say, to revenue, because you know as you were saying on the lower end, the commodity side of the market, we enter multiple step high value. On the third area, as you would have seen, PI's own ability, you know, from a process technology capability. Our teams have been working extensively to look at how we improve efficiency and throughput and creating more white space. And I must comment, the team has done a very good job over the last couple of years to create white space in the existing assets. 
while reducing the capex and improving their asset efficiency. And that, that is something which is slightly visible, as you can see, and will continue to get better. So I would, it's not linear in nature, but it is getting, and we believe that how we're going to put deploy less capital for more efficiency, that's going to be the philosophy. One, the technological and capability point of investment point of view. Third, by finding the right asset revenue mix play for how they're not linear in terms of the asset requirement to the revenue play. Sure, sure, man. So, uh, so directionally, we should look at a higher asset turn on the current existing base as well. Would that be a right understanding? Yeah, because the investments, yes, and also there'll be investments which are going on the R&D phase, as you would say. So that could be the different way of looking at it, right? Sure, sure. And uh, just second question on the pharma bit. I know you you mentioned, you know, alluded to it uh, earlier in the comment as well. Uh, but, you know, from a portfolio perspective, now uh, on the agree piece, we are largely on the innovator side. On the pharma piece, as of now, we are slightly more bent towards generic. Uh, and, and hence, probably, you know, higher working capital, lower asset terms, margin profile, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what time frame uh, do you think one should look at uh, from, you know, a rejigging of this business, the pharma piece, and ramping it up to PS standards there? So if I look at it, uh, you know, I would say re-engineering, I would say right side. You know, one is taking in what it is, making sure it gets into a steady state and run. So from time to that, I would look at 18 months because there's a lot that needs to be done to make sure it comes to steady state. Obviously, parallelly, we'll be working on the next level of play. And I would say the next 24 months, we should have a clear picture of the way forward. And then, and that's the steps which will start to show up in two years. Basically, what I've seen, 24 months. A total impact which is being created by PI to be visible. Excuse me, this is the operator. Mr. Perival, may be requested to come back for a follow-up, please. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Javar from Investec Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is around, you know, the input acquisition. So, you know, the last uh, five years, the growth of the company has been about 5-6% bigger. And if you look at asset terms, it has been relatively lower. So the question is, uh, uh, you know, in the current, you know, phase, if you look at the CAPEX, the intensity in the last five years has been coming down. So, what is the current utilization level? Uh, that is number one. If you have to break the next phase of growth into the growth in the existing business and the new line of business, so do you have a kind, some kind of line of sight and what kind of potential growth be in the existing business? Because maybe the capital, uh, you know, uh, commitment was relatively lower than required. So if you can even break up the expected growth in, that, in the current molecule, do you see what is the potential of growth and what is the kind of growth that is dependent on future success? Gary, would you like to come in and answer that? Yes. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. So, uh, as, as pointed out earlier in the discussion, uh, our endeavor is to first make sure that we have uh, stabilized the entire product pipeline commercially and uh, also from technology perspective. That's the first effort that we are looking at. And the second one is to really bring in the expertise of science, innovation, and technology of PI and see how this can be leveraged into ISL. And do, through that, we will be able to step up the science, innovation, and technology engine in a way where, you know, it will come to the PI level and start adding value to this whole acquisition. I think that's how I look at it. I think there was a question about the revenue growth rates and change in inventory. I should be that. So these two things, in my opinion, should aid in the revenue growth uh, uh, and the way we see the pharma piece that is getting added up from the pipeline of PI. So I think there are three elements. Hello? Yeah. There are three elements which I want to put it across, which should aid us in the revenue line. Uh, one is the the commercial excellence piece that we want to bring in through the product pipeline. A uh, second one is uh, the way we are looking at the entire pharma pipeline of PI together. 
I think uh, that's that's what I, I envisage right now when I am looking at a synergy integration of PI capabilities and ISF. Thank you. Excuse me, this is the operator. Mr. Javar, may we request you to come back for a follow up, please? Thank you. We take the next question. Ladies and gentlemen, we take the last question from the line of Amar Moria from Alpha Accurate Advice. Please go ahead. Yeah. So thanks a lot for the opportunity. Two questions from my side. Your voice is not clear, Amar. Clear now? Hello? Yes. Is it, is it, is it clear now, sir? Yes. Yeah, it is better, but not very clear. But continue, please. Yeah. So, so, sir, I have two two questions. Number one is, uh, you know, what is the current utilization in case of InSwift? And secondly, you know, a ballpark uh, at a 1,500 crores of investment which we did, uh, what kind of, you know, when we can expect and what kind of peak revenue, um, you know, we expect from this piece, given that, you know, new investments will be just done for the maintenance. That is number one. And secondly, the current ROC is around 3% based on the current acquisition. So when we expect this ROC to reach at least to the company level ROC. So yeah, then thanks for your question. So first uh, question, uh, current uh, capacity utilization level is anywhere between 70 to 75%. Okay, for different uh, production blocks. Um, coming to the second part of your question, um, well, as I mentioned, that we will come up with uh, you know maybe more detailed um, plans, projections uh, alongside the closure of this transaction. But yes, I mean, given our initial assessments and. Um, uh, Estimates, uh, we would certainly look at uh, more than 1.4 as well as the uh, you know, revenue growth target um, in the next whatever two, three years' uh, time. Uh, in terms of return on uh, capital or, or these kind of financial parameters, as, as we have already mentioned and explained in past, that over a period of time, our objective would be to kind of uh, improve our overall uh, ROCs and ROEs of the company, PI. And therefore, you can imagine that we'll be able to, uh, we'll be projecting to improve, uh, significant improvement in the current levels of, uh, you know, uh, these returns. And that will happen both ways. While on one side, we will work on, um, you know, growing the revenue, improving the quality of revenue on one side. And on the other side, we will also be um, working to uh, significantly optimize the working capital levels, asset terms, and those kind of initiatives so that the outcome is uh, in alignment to our, our uh, general uh, return that, that we have at PI. I hope this answers your question. Oh, excuse me, this is the operator. Mr. Moria, may we request you to come back for a follow-up, please? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, so yes, thank you everybody for coming on to this call today and we will continue to look forward for your continued support and you may please come in touch with our leadership in order for any questions that you may have and wishing you all a very safe uh, time ahead to you and your family. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of PI Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.